Kicking off the list at number 10, the mysterious black tomb. Back in 2018, remains were found by archaeologists in Egypt, and apparently they had never seen the Brendan Fraser classic, The Mummy, because they opened it. Just because, you know, we wanted to see what was inside. They found a massive black granite sarcophagus in Alexandria and it hasn't been touched in over 2,000 years and we still opened it. These guys wore masks because apparently it had an awful smell. You don't say. I left a banana in my locker in high school for winter break once and honestly, nothing could beat that. That was the worst thing I've ever smelled. Not even a cursed mummy. I don't know, maybe. They opened it and they found three skeletons. Not just one, but three. Nice combo. They also found this brown sewage water just lying there, which I'm sure smelled great. They opened it up two inches and the smell was so foul that the committee that was on the scene, they straight up ran away. It's almost like opening the tomb of a mummy is forbidden and we should never do it again. Mustafa Waziri, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, said in response to locals freaking out about this that we've opened it and thank God the world has not fallen into darkness. I was the first to put my whole head inside the sarcophagus and here I stand before you, I'm fine. Nice. That was in 2018. How's the world now, Azari? Hmm? Was the mummy juice worth it? Now we're wearing masks every day, not just when we open yucky tombs. Thanks, man. Coming in at number nine, we have telescope ghouls. Whoa, 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 look up at the top of the James Webb Space Telescope. Do you see what I see? Are these the ghosts of dead astronauts or technicians? Or maybe they're alien apparitions? This photo by NASA's Chris Gunn is incredible and he has aptly titled it Ghosts and Mirrors for obvious reasons. So it turns out that the picture taken in the Goddard Space Flight Center's spacecraft system development and integration facility clean room is taken with a super long exposure, all the while ultraviolet lights were being shone over the telescope to look for contamination. Now the result is this spooky picture. Sounds like a reasonable explanation, right? Some may say too reasonable, joking, but this telescope may well capture some spooky images of its very own in the future. It's the successor to Hubble and it's off to explore the universe in March 2021. Any Lord of the Rings fans out there, stand up. How much does this exosolar planet look like the Eye of Sauron at number 8? Like, creepily so. Did J.R.R. Tolkien know about the formal hut when he wrote The Lord of the Rings in 1937? If he didn't, perhaps he foreshadowed it. Get a load of this picture. This is Formal Hout B in orbit around Formal Hout. The exoplanet is also known as Dagon. It's an extrasolar object and it orbits a star that gives it its name. How far away is this terrifying eye formation? Only 25 light years. The 2012 images from the Hubble Space Telescope are terrifying. The name Dagon in mythology is a Jewish deity that represents a half man, half fish. Just a side note there for you. Coming in at number seven, did NASA capture an alien moon base? And also, did they accidentally release pictures of it? Hmm. According to some conspiracists, then yeah, they did. Have a look at these and tell me what you think. Is this alien evidence? Conspiracists YouTube channel Secure Team 10 claim that these images were proof of an alien base on the moon. The YouTube channel has 1.7 million subscribers, so a lot of people are watching their content. Their channel is filled with moon conspiracies and they think that these images are a smoking gun for NASA. UFOlogist and hoax Buster Scott Brando said that the images used by Secure Team 10 were low quality and low resolution. He seemed to think that the images are just an optical illusion. Who knows though? Another classic from the Daily Express, we have alien astronauts caught on camera at number 6. Some think that Mars rover Curiosity captured aliens, others think that it's a widespread conspiracy that humans are already on Mars. The first manned Mars mission is set to begin within the next 10 years, but some are saying that the photos taken by Curiosity and published by NASA already show that there are humans on the red planet. Some people think that these shadow images show astronauts working on the rover to repair it. Others say that the droids show humanoid looking aliens. Now the conspiracists say that NASA didn't realize how much they were showing when the images were released into the public domain. So is it aliens or are humans already up on Mars? If so, why would that be hidden from us? Or do these pictures have a more logical explanation? US UFO conspiracist good old Scott C. Waring said that this just goes to show the public that the rover is being maintained by humans on Mars and that there are other spacecraft kept secret from the public that can carry peers to Mars in just a few minutes. You know what Scott, I don't know about that one. Okay, these death eaters living out there in space terrify me at number 5. The Harry Potter fans in this video will probably be just as freaked out by this as I am. 
I don't like them. Get a load of what is lurking in the mist of the Carina Nebula. To me, these are straight up Death Eaters waiting to suck out my soul. But actually, they're supposed to be knots of dark molecular gas. Knots of dark molecular gas waiting to suck out my soul, right? These clouds of gas surround the Great Nebula in Carina, which used to be one of the brightest stars in the sky in the 1800s, but now it's significantly faded. This maybe lends credence to my whole sucking theory, right? Okay, fine, they probably aren't Death Eaters, but still, they're spooky. This picture freaks me out. Coming into number four, we have the Hand of God. NASA released this x ray image of light detected by NASA's Chanda X ray Observatory in 2014. Can you see why they called it the Hand of God? Because it kind of looks like. You know. So this is actually a pulsar wind nebula, a stellar corpse that spins rapidly, firing a particle wind. NASA themselves are mystified by the shape. Alongside the image on their website, they wrote, One of the big mysteries of this object is whether the pulsar particles are interacting with the material in a specific way to make it look like a hand, or if the material is in fact shaped like a hand. Now, A lot of people do genuinely believe that this is God's mark in the universe, like the eye that cropped up earlier. Now I'm not too convinced, but I'd love to know what you think. Ah, we have a famous Mars picture that caused a stir at number three. We have Bigfoot on Mars. Mars's now defunct robot rover Spirit captured this image in late 2007. Who this? A Rudy Nudie alien lady or Bigfoot? Either way, aliens, right? This image boosted the life on Mars discussion, with many conspiracists saying that this image was proof. NASA explained the image is simply the paradelia phenomena. This is where humans see faces when they aren't there. Analyzing Spirit's image, if this was an alien, it'd be pretty small, according to Phil Platt of Bad Astronomy website. Anyway, NASA says it's nothing more than a Martian rock, although NASA would say that, wouldn't they? Probably because it is just a rock, right? Coming into number two, we have this screaming skull. It's pretty terrifying. This screaming skull was another of NASA's Halloween releases, this time from the year 2000. The haunting image was taken from the orbiting Chandra Observatory and is one of a cluster of galaxies known as Perseus. You can see Perseus right here in X ray vision. The Perseus cluster contains thousands upon thousands of galaxies, so we can't really truly comprehend this picture. It's just much more than a spooky picture than what looks like a skull, it's a lot going on there. While the image is already pretty spooky, it gets scarier when you realise that the bright spot in the x-ray is a black hole. Not to worry though, this scary skull cluster is 320 million light years away. Finally at number one, we have a truly iconic and somewhat infamous picture, the Viking 1 faces on Mars. This is one of the most famous NASA images out there and has been used as absolute fuel to conspiracy theorists fire over the past 40 years, that was since the picture was taken in July 1976. This snap was taken by NASA's Viking 1 spacecraft and seemed to show the shadowy likeness of a human face, only this face is 2 miles long. Taken in the Cydonia region of Mars, the image was sent back to mission controllers at the Jet Propulsion Lab. At the time, theorists went wild saying that it was evidence of an ancient civilization on Mars. Now the image did quite look like an Egyptian pharaoh after all. NASA explained that the image was just a Martian messer with the sunlight playing tricks. NASA later went back with the Mars orbiter camera, but people simply explained the lack of face that time by saying that it was a cloudy day and the alien detail couldn't be seen. I don't know, I'm thinking it probably was just a trick of the light. Number 10, Surtsey Island. On part one of this list we mentioned the global seed vaults. Well for part Part two, we need to mention the island where seeds are forbidden. In fact, any human activity is forbidden. This island is also pretty new. It was born from a volcanic eruption back in 1963, and scientists are using the fresh face of land to study what it looks like to, well, not have a Starbucks. They're studying ecosystems without any human interference, which I think is really creepy, but also quite interesting. Scientists studying the land here have to just follow one rule, and that rule is no seeds. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Like, obviously. One time, a scientist had to go number two, and in turn, he accidentally grew a tomato plant. He pooped a tomato plant out. Not really. There was a seed somewhere in there. That would be painful. They acted fast and got rid of the plant in order to not interfere with their study, but like, what a weird job. Guy can't even take a shit at work. 
How stressful is that? Number nine, Chernobyl. One of the worst nuclear disasters of all time happened on April 26, 1986, when reactor number four at the Chernobyl power complex exploded due to unstable and low power levels. Reactor four had been shut down a day before due to maintenance, and the next day at 1.23 a.m., it exploded and radioactive debris just compiled a fuel and reactive components just rained down all over the building. It was horrible. Toxic fumes were carried from the wind, and just after four months, 28 workers had died just due to radiation exposure alone. Now, eventually, they had to evacuate over over 100,000 residents, and to this day, that zone is a no-go. Reactive 4 will stay highly radioactive for another 20,000 years, so photos for now, but if we get close, it's not gonna end up well. Number eight. Area 51. Remember that Area 51 raid, you know, when everybody was determined to find out the truth about aliens? How did that go again? At least 2,000 people came to a festival in Rachel, Nevada, located near the gates leading to Area 51. Yeah, we could only get so much time off of work. We decided that consequences don't exist. Power in numbers, I guess. Nice. Love the glitter and spandex. That's good. So we didn't raid Area 51 because it's one of the most forbidden places in the world to enter. It wasn't as easy as a hashtag, you know? But why exactly did people get arrested in tinfoil hats? What was the goal here? Well, these controversial photos show that there's more than meets the eye in this Nevada military base. Located at Groom Lake in southern Nevada, if you wanted to take a look at this place from the skies, say, I don't know, satellite imagery, well, it wasn't until 2018 until those pictures were uncensored. Honestly, when you UFOs were on the news recently, I thought that was the end of it. I still don't know how I feel about Area 51, but next time we raid them, let's get more than 30 people wearing flip-flops. Just an idea. Number seven, North Sentinel Island. Heading over to India, this island here is home of the Sentinelese tribe, one of the most forbidden islands in the world. But why? Is there a resort on it? Is there some sort of Bahama Michael Jackson suite that you can't swim up to? No. Located in the Bay of Bengal, North Sentinel Island is about 1,200 kilometers from India, and while most islands are shrinking, this one actually grew back in 2004. That's right, the island lifted up a couple of meters during an earthquake, so the west and south sides gained an extra kilometer. The inhabitants on this floating cursed island are amongst the few uncontacted tribes left in the world. They've apparently been there for 50,000 years. There's no sign of agriculture or even fire, yet this tribe has thrived. If we try and get close, they try and drive anybody away. In fact, back in 2006, two fishermen lost their lives simply because they got too close to the island without knowing who was on it. The Indian government at this point didn't roll up to the beach and start interrogating locals. Instead, they just made it forbidden to go to completely. And honestly, that's a great call. There's other islands. Just go to center Island. I don't know. Go anywhere else. Number six, Lascaux Caves. There's nothing more eerie than humanity's origin. And for archaeologists from around the world, this cave system in France doubles as the world's oldest art gallery. Those Paleolithic paintings are haunting to look at, and they were created from humans roughly 20,000 years ago, but it's now considered a world heritage site. So if you're thinking about sneaking down there to write Jordan was here in Sharpie, you better think again, because it's not open anymore, and there's a good reason for it. Aside from paintings and clues to humanity's earliest, these caves are home to ancient bones and tools. So it's pretty much an old graveyard as well. It's very haunting. The cave was opened originally to the public in 1948, but due to carbon dioxide levels from visitors, it was closed in 1963. You have to be so tender with these ancient pieces of art. The small opening that led to the cave originally was enlarged to make room for visitors and such, but even the change of airflow after that deteriorated some of the paintings. Number five, the Paris Catacombs. As above, so below is an underrated horror film. A team of explorers accidentally go too deep when exploring the Paris Catacombs, and in turn, they have to face their own hell. Well, it's not too far-fetched, it seems. What feels like a never-ending maze, the tunnels under Paris stretch for hundreds of miles. Originally, the tunnels were built for Paris stone mines, but near the end of the 18th century, it turned into something haunting. See, cemeteries started to fill up, literally. At this point in time, humans weren't too clean. I mean, bodies were literally just laying on the side of the road, and they started to pile up, so the solution was to use these catacombs. These tunnels have been there for centuries, so you might as well put them to good use. And by good use, I mean arguably the scariest basement in the world, full of bones. Number four, Island of the Dolls, Mexico. The Island of the Dolls, honestly, that already sounds Horrible. This island is famous for having dolls or doll parts just spread all about. Now the islands that surround this one are inhabited, they're fine, but this one is said to be filled with demonic spirits. Specifically, the spirit of a young girl who drowned there way back. It's like Camp Crystal Lake, but with even more plastic. 
These dolls are hanging or nailed to trees, and these dolls have to come from somewhere, and they all came from a local resident by the name of Julian Santa Barrera. He put up all these doll parts in order to try and ward away those demonic spirits and keep the island bare and just abandoned. Just keep everybody away from this. And you know what? A bunch of doll parts ought to do the trick. To this day, nobody dares to approach the island. They would much rather snap a pick from far away on their canoe, which is a great idea. If it didn't look haunted before, it definitely does now. Great call, Julian, but the doll parts couldn't have just used smudge sticks? Okay. Number three. Pluto's Gate, also known as the Gate to Hell. Neat. These runes discovered in Turkey back in 1965 are beautiful, but obviously cursed. Historians believe that this site is the ancient city of Hierapolis, and if you're thinking about visiting these eerie runes, well, you better leave the family pet at home. Any animal that enters these ruins meets instant death. Sparrows were tossed in, and then they immediately stopped breathing and dropped. Scientists have figured out the solution, they think, and it's still pretty haunting. They measured the CO2 concentration, and it turns out that while the sun is up, it burns away this gas, but at night when the temperature drops significantly, because that's what happens when the sun goes away, science, the CO2 becomes heavier than air and it creates this deadly gas cloud on the floor. And then when the sun rises back up again, the concentration of CO2 hits 35%, so now it's deadly enough for animals and even humans. Just stay away from anything called the gates of hell. There's a start. I don't know. We could have figured this out way sooner. Number two, the Svalbard Vault. Over the pandemic, I spent a lot of time playing video games. And some of my favorites always have a similar theme. They always have this post-apocalyptic feel. There's like shelters with survivors or vaults. It's stressful, but engaging. In real life, we have a global seed vault, and it's deep in the Arctic Circle on the island Spitsbergen. It's this massive bunker that has since been deemed the Doomsday Vault. Sounds scary, and it looks scary too. This is where humans are storing food crops. It contains 100 million seeds, so if the earth all of a sudden gets wiped out, or even if all the ice melts, this vault will still be good to go. It's built high enough on a mountain so it won't drown. All that water that's just flooded the rest of humanity, well, ideally it'll regrow the earth. Sounds like a fun, cute way to get humans to think about the future, but I'm kind of concerned here? Is there something we don't know? Is there an asteroid on the way? Why is everybody involved in this so soon? Are we in a fight? Number one, tomb KB-55. Okay, we talked about a creepy tomb, now we gotta finish with another creepy tomb. Located in the Valley of Kings in Egypt, tomb 55, otherwise known as KV-55, was discovered by Edward Ayrton back in 1907. And the reason we call this tomb by a number, rather than, you know, a name or a king, is because we really don't know who or what is inside. Even the sarcophagus, we're like, ugh, bones, definitely bones. We don't know about this one at all. Even the walls inside, they aren't like other tombs covered in ancient hieroglyphs, tipping the reader off on the noble history of the king that lies before them, here there's nothing. The only hint that remains here is one hieroglyph and it translates to, the evil one shall not live again. Sick! Even these massive stones were built in order to prevent anything from getting out of that tomb. Usually with these ancient Egyptians, it's the opposite. It's made so that grave robbers can't get in. The description for whoever's inside the tomb has also been destroyed, so we literally have no idea who or what is in KB55. Coming in at number 10, we have a ghost in Cepheus. This looks like a ghost in the ether for sure. It's actually a rather mysterious dusty curtain featuring a very faint reflection of Nebula VDB152. The reddish tinge you see is ultraviolet light from a star causing a rusty looking luminescence in the nebula dust. Described as a cosmic phantom, this picture was released by NASA on Halloween in 2012 and titled A Ghost in Cepheus. This intergalactic ghost is 1,400 light years away, so arguably a safe enough distance for us to deal with. Who knows how fast this ethereal dust can travel though? Also, who knows what this dust is like up close? I don't trust it. Dust it. Number nine, the Forbidden City. Built all the way back in 1420, around the time of the Ming Dynasty, the Forbidden City is said to be extremely haunted, aside from being the largest ancient palatial structure on the planet. Located in Beijing, China, it's one of the five most important palaces in the world. It was the Imperial Palace of China from 1420 to 1912. More than 24 emperors lived here, in this massive city that took 1 million workers 14 years to build. Inside the city, there's around 980 buildings, and there's roughly 8,000 rooms. It's a lot of rooms to haunt, really, ghost paradise. It was declared a World Heritage Site in 1987, but come 2000, a Starbucks was built on the land. Yeah, the classic, look at how beautiful this landmark is, let's open up a gift shop scenario. By the time 2007 came along, there was enough outrage to get officials to close said Starbucks. No more venti lattes for you, Sarah, sorry. Number eight, the Gates of Guinea. 
are he gates of Guinea, as I wrote. The souls of the dead have to go somewhere, and depending on your beliefs, that somewhere could be either really beautiful and peaceful, or absolutely terrifying. In the world of voodoo, that place is an underworld called the Gates of Guinea. And here's the front door. Come on in. Awesome, take your shoes off. Located in Louisiana, this tomb, that of voodoo priestess Marie Laveau, is apparently the entrance to these deep waters, this twilight realm. And some voodoo followers try and open these gates to access the souls of the deep. Don't play Pokemon Go here. Do not. You don't want to do that. Leave the Poliwog at home, okay? He's a trap. You don't need him. Number seven, Mount Osor. Mount Osor is not the name of just one singular mountain, but instead it's an entire mountainous range. Translating to Mount Fear, Cool. This area is known as the entrance to the afterlife because it features all the geographical elements that are similar to the Japanese Buddhist descriptions of paradise and hell. So not only is this area home to eight symbolic mountain tops, but also a lake with acidic water that only one species of fish can survive in. We got acid fish, come on in, grab a canoe. There's also nothing but bear pits full of vipers. Not an ideal spot to take your family camping, that's for sure. Beyond this mountain range, there's even a river that's known as the border between earth and hell. This is where each and every soul must cross in order to reach the afterlife. If I'm somehow selling you on this idea and you want to take a trip up to Viper Lane, when you get there you'd find statues and offerings along the banks of this river which are intended to help the past souls find their way during this journey because it's definitely not good if the souls get lost because you don't want to even know where you end up. Getting lost in a journey to the afterlife? No man, I don't keep me on track. Ways. Thank you. Every year from July 22nd to 24th, those wanting to communicate with the dead will head to this temple located here to speak with spiritual mediums known as the Itako. So if you're feeling like spicing up your weekend, go gamble with souls of the dead. Have fun. Text us when you get there. And back. Number six, Ghost City. Fengdu is located in China and it's often referred to as the city of ghosts. For a long time, it was believed that this is where the dead stop by on their way to the afterlife and it is here where they must pass three tests in order to get there three tests. It's a lot of tests right after you die. The first one is for the newly departed souls who must cross over the bridge of helplessness. Sounds like a good bridge, better than the bridge to Terabithia, which is meant to judge their virtue. Okay, so there's demons here who judge whether the soul is good or bad, and the ones who are good can pass while the bad ones are pushed into the water below. Imagine a demon pushing you into the water. It's worse than getting pushed in at a pool party. The ones who pass that first test go on to the ghost torturing pass, where they stand in front of the ruler of the underworld. If they pass that judgment test, then the third and final trial takes place at the Tianzi Palace where they will stand on a certain stone for one minute, also on one leg. For three minutes they have to do this. This is where hot yoga comes in handy. Only a good soul can do this, apparently. If you lose your balance, like I just did back there, maybe you're not wearing your minimal runners and you're wearing Tim's, or maybe you're just condemned to hell. Either one. Fengdu also has many temples and shrines which hold paintings and sculptures that represent people in the underworld. So go take a look at the oldest, awfulest selfie on the planet, that's for sure. Go take a look at some old demon art, have fun. Number five, Huska Castle. Located north of Prague in the Czech Republic, Huska Castle is supposedly built over a bottomless hole that leads directly to, you guessed it, Hell. Legend says the 13th century king Ottokar II offered a pardon to any prisoner who was willing to get lowered into this hole and live to talk about it. What a deal! The first prisoner, when they were lowered into that pit, they only lasted 30 seconds before they started screaming. Legend has it that when he was brought back up, his hair turned white and he'd aged a great amount. That's a lot of stress in 30 seconds. What he saw, however, was also pretty intense and it kind of explains it. He saw these half-human, half-demon type creatures flying around with scaly wings. Awesome, that's terrifying. The castle was built over the hole without a water source because it wasn't initially meant to be used by humans. Instead, it was only built for demons, should they rise from the mysterious hole. That way they can get out. God love these demons, you know? You don't want them trapped there for too long. It's a lot of noise, a lot of complaints, a lot of pollution. <laughs> Number four, Nihua Island. Located in Hawaii, this island has not yet turned into a resort either. What do you know? In fact, the population of this island is a whopping 170, also referred to as the Forbidden Island. It was bought back in 1864 by Elizabeth Sinclair, and it's been privately owned since hence the small population. Thing is, in 1952, the polio epidemic hit these islands and a ban was then put in place. So now you couldn't leave nor enter the island. Nobody got sick, which is great, but now if you want to enter this island, you need to gain special access, which is a lot harder than it may seem. Even if you're rich, even if you're loaded, you can't just buy your way onto the island. So for now, we'll just zoom in on Google Earth. Bird's eye view for the win. It's a nice island. It's like a moon shape. It's good. Number three, Island Moor, Scotland. What better island to visit than one with nobody on it? 
It's gonna be pretty quiet. In the early 1900s, a ship was heading to the Flannan Islands, completely uninhabited, but on the ship we had Captain James Harvey and Joseph Moore. They were heading there to watch the lighthouse, but upon arrival, nobody greeted them. He blew his horn, waited, still nobody. That's when you gotta text them, be like, hey, I'm here, come down the thousands of steps, thanks. The replacement lighthouse keeper rode to shore and started walking up the steep set of stairs towards the lighthouse, but when he got there, he realized the door was unlocked, and two of the three coats were missing. Upon further investigation, he saw the half-eaten food, a chair that had been tossed over, and the kitchen clock had stopped. No sign of the keepers. Hmm. When checking the lighthouse log, the previous days were odd. December 12th, the second assistant, Thomas Marshall, wrote, severe winds, the likes of which I have never seen before in 20 years. James was awfully quiet, and William, the third lad, was crying the whole time. Sinister vibes for sure. That's like the movie The Lighthouse in real life. That's a hard no for me, never going to this island. Next. Number two, Paviglia Island, Italy. The small island of Paviglia has taken many, many lives. When the bubonic plague arrived in 1348, the island became a quarantine colony. So if you had symptoms, you were just sent to this island to die. How horrible is that? Then again, in 1630, the Black Death crept in, and then once again, the center of this island became a mass graveyard. In the 1800s, the mentally ill were sent to this island because an asylum was built. The rumor was that in the 1930s, this doctor tried crazy experiments on these patients and then he himself went crazy and then jumped from the tall bell tower. Although the tower doesn't stand anymore, his screams apparently are still heard by locals. The soil is 50% human remains as well, so if you're looking to plant some haunted aloe vera, well, there you go. And finally, number one, Fort Knox. Located in Kentucky, USA, this place really is the jackpot. The most heavily guarded place on the planet, and it's not an Egyptian pyramid. Odd. The amount of gold in here might actually be a lot more than ancient pharaohs, to be fair, so listen up. Fort Knox is home to a large amount of the United States gold reserves. Thing is, even if you work here, you're still not getting into Harry Potter's vault of treasures. Each staff member only knows part of the combination to get in, so you can't just heist your way out of lunch one day. Rumor has it, there's apparently no gold in here, but in Instead, they're studying an extraterrestrial. Another rumor is that the United States actually sold off all the gold ages ago, and they just don't want anybody to know. I weirdly vote the latter. Mm -hmm.